Now, let's see, where was I? Oh, that's right. Madam Overy begged and pleaded with Freddy to either leave town or take up his old gunslinging ways, something which Freddy was just a mite reluctant to consider. So they decided to sleep on it. And though they didn't get much sleep, Freddy did mull it over somewhat. The next morning, he decided to... <coughs> maybe I, I better... <coughs> Wait, maybe I better... <coughs> Never mind. <coughs> Just go on, go on. <coughs> Penelope, coarse gold, Madam Overy. I know I've got to get out of this town before they gun me down, but I can't. Coarse gold's my home, and darn it to heck, I'm not gonna let some cheap criminals run me out of my home. Oh, Sadie's right. I've got to be the man I once was. I've got to dredge up my ugly past, meet it square in the face, stare it down, pick it up, dust it off, fluff it up, and put it on again! <coughs> this is your cozy little bedroom. I wonder how this would look if I added a little paneling. You picked up this old armoire at the farmer's market. It gave you a hernia. So instead of paying the doctor's bills, the owner let you keep it. The armoire door is wide open, displaying your outfits for all the world to see and admire. A small picture of your mother, rest her soul, if only she could have lived to see you now, an ex-gun-slinging pharmacist in coarse gold, California. She'd have had a heart attack and died. It's your seamy, pasturepedic, 100% rawhide-filled mattress. You bumped into it at a sidewalk sale and fractured your shin. They let you take it home, which was cheaper than paying to have your leg fixed. Your dad unloaded his old vaudeville trunk on you. Not on purpose, though. He didn't know you were standing underneath when he unloaded it off the top of the stagecoach. Ever since then, you've had brief blackouts. But what the hey? Free trunk, right? Careful. Your old hat and gun slinging outfit. And, hmm, it smells of camphor. You take your old gunslinger clothes and your good guy model Stetson hat. Your authentic moose skin rug looks very attractive with those eyeglasses on it. It would have been a mite less lumpy if somebody had remembered to skin the moose first. While browsing at a second-hand store, you were struck by this particularly sturdy reading lamp. The result was a mild concussion. The guy who'd accidentally dropped it out of the second-story window was very apologetic and, rather than pay for the skull surgery, offered to let you take the lamp home with you. While window shopping in Chowchilla, your eye fell on this plain but serviceable nightstand. They got your eye back in, but the owner didn't want to touch the nightstand anymore, and he let you keep it. It's a key! Hot dog, now we're getting somewhere! Score! You take the key. Hot dog, now we're getting somewhere. Lovely old glass-fronted bookcase containing some of your favorite leisure time reading material. Thoracic Park by Michael Crowton. A Brief History of Slime by Lugie J. Hawking. Diabetics by O. Mom Hubbard. Nasal Passages by Gail Shewiz. And 
how to satisfy a sheep every time and make it for more, which you keep out of sight behind the other volumes. This is no time to sit and read books. You're in the middle of a stirring saga of the Old West. You ran across this desk chair outside the general store. In so doing, you tripped and knocked out two teeth. You threatened to sue the owner, but he placated you by giving you this fine chair to keep. You stumbled onto this big old dresser at a moving sale and broke your toe. So rather than pay to have your toe fixed, the owner lets you keep the dresser. In fact, you get all your furniture by accident. You stumbled on your grooming aids. Swedish leather lysbianoid scalpicide, Santa Fe ear hair revitalizer, and old Mr. Smathers preferred gum pinkener. You don't really need those grooming aids. You're a Western style hero. Your hair is always in place and your gums are always sparkling pink. It's a claim check for a pair of boots, your old cowboy boots from the before time, before the accident. Could it be? That's what you get for not opening this drawer for the past decade. Score! You pick up the claim check, your hand trembling with the memory of the last time you wore the boots that you traded for it. That monster, Kenny the Kid, looking down at you and laughing as your ear bled in the hot sun. You put those boots away, never to wear them again. And when you moved to coarse gold, you sent them to be cleaned and polished. That was years ago. They've probably been lost or thrown away by now. Why, it's your old roll-top desk. What happened to that roll you recently left on top of it? You must have eaten it. You unlock the desktop. The drawers lock. You unlock the desk drawer. It's an old letter, cobwebbed, yellowed, and faded. Score! You take the letter out of the drawer. Srini, who let you in? Your most gracious Native American, running gag permitted me egress from the outside of the street. It was then that I allowed him to knock himself off for the remainder of the day, since we are still closed. That's fine, Srini. Look, I've reached a decision. My life is in danger. Aw, oh, heck, the whole town's in danger. I must take up gunslinging, and I'll need your help. Pardon this for being said, Freddy Farkas, but you are a humble pharmacist. Shooting as most perfectionally as a gunslinger is a skill requiring most years of tireless practice. You are ill-equipped. Perhaps you should make peace with your chosen deity and prepare to go to the great pharmacy counter in the sky. Srini, you'll have to trust me on this. I used to be a gunslinger before I took up pharmacology. If I did it before, I can do it again. It shouldn't take long to brush up my skills. I've just got to find my guns and do a little practice shooting. Very well, Freddy Farkas. When you are prepared, meet me at the edge of town, and together we shall practice what little must be left of your shooting skills. Yes? Mind the store, won't you, Srini? I'm off to uphold justice and stuff. Okie the dokie!
That's Gluteus Maximilian and his horse, who appears to be wearing one of those hilarious whoopee saddles. They call him Gluteus because he's the butt of every practical joke in town. You can't think of Hey, Max. Max ignores you, but he seems to flinch a bit. Perhaps he thinks you're in on yet another nasty prank. That's just another bit of authentic western scenery. Those flies are really enjoying that byproduct. Score! You bravely, stupidly grab the steaming fly-laden horse plop. Fortunately, it seems to be holding together well as you place it in your pocket. Taking a serious look at yourself. This poor guy got left behind when his troop went through. He had dysentery. He's since recovered, but Dr. Gillespie's cure seems to have affected his mind as he still thinks his company will return for him. Yes, sir! Nice day, sir! Good to see you, sir! This combination barbershop and dental emporium is under the exclusive proprietorship of Salvatore O'Hanahan, Coarse Gold's only Italian-Irish barber. You're certainly happy it's not winter now. When Sal cranks up the heat in this baby, you can smell the memories of hundreds of miners, many of whom are now long dead, or at least smell that way. Fletcher Castoria, the town plumber, sits here patiently waiting for his turn in the chair. Got nothing else to do since nobody in Coarse Gold has plumbing. Hey Fletcher, how's the plumbing business? He doesn't respond. Apparently he's too engrossed in reading the latest copy of the Scoocher Down and Examiner. Sal didn't really want a buffalo head mounted on his wall, but when it ran through the back of the building, he decided to just leave it. Hey, I put out a fire last night and, and saved the town. Proud of me? Of course I'm proud of you! Ooh la la and va va voom. No, that's not an exclamation. That's the names of the two ladies prominently featured on Madame Spicy French postcards. Or rather, they're the two ladies with the prominent features on Madame Spicy French postcards. Score! You hand Salvatore your French postcards. Your customers may not be able to read, Salvatore, but I bet they would enjoy looking at pictures. Oh, no, no, they're not interested in... Wait a minute. What in the hell are those girls doing? I'm not sure, but I don't think it's legal on this side of the Sierra Nevada. Well, no, your exceptional generosity's got to be reciprocated. Could I be interested in you in a free shave? No, thank you, Sal. Uh, then, how about a free wisdom tooth extraction? Oh, no. <laughs> Mine are already out. Had them pulled in the dental department while I was in college. Needed the extra money for tuition. Okay, well then. <clears throat> uh, let me see. What, what I got in here that'd be a suitable swap? <clears throat> Uh, oh, aye, aye, there we go. Uh, 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 take this bottle of that newfangled nitrous oxide I got off the Fars Welgo wagon last week. 
Ain't none of these guys around here wants to be the first man to sissy to stand up to my forceps for a little old tooth pulling. Why, thank you, Salvatore. Perhaps I can use this in some of my experiments. Score! Sal, do you still have that pair of boots I dropped off for a shine? I know it's been about six years now, but I just remembered I left them here. Hmm, let me see. What's the number on this claim check? Hmm, let me look under the counter here. Yep, still here. Have them ready for you next Tuesday. Oh, never mind. I'll just take them as is. Uh, don't worry about the storage charges, okay? fella. Doesn't pay to pick a fight with Sam Andreas. Mom, there was a fire last night that almost burned down the whole town. Don't y'all think I saw that for myself on the way to work this morning? Honestly. Fortunately, I was able to put the fire out with a little baking soda. Whew, so that's the stench I've been smelling. What an inconsiderate clod you can be. That burnt baking soda smell is simply nauseating. It's no wonder I got no customers today. I thought I was doing the town a favor. Well, next time you think a little order. Say, Hop. Hear about the big fire last night? Oh yes, very dramatic. I came to the rescue though. Yes, uh, put out that fire single-handedly. Oh, very good. We all proud of you. You BMOC. BMOC? Big mensch of cost gold. It's one of those newfangled old Missa coffee machines. Helen sets it out every other day for free coffee. Score! Mom offers free coffee to her regular customers. You're as regular as anyone. 11 a.m. every morning, you head straight for the outhouse. So, as usual, you pour yourself a steaming hot cup of joe. How can we put this delicately? It's a fragrant, freshly baked road apple. Look what you've done! Freddy Focus, I'll see you run out of town for this! Hop sing, hop to it! Get out here and clean up this mess! Damn these flies! Oh, ho, ho, ho! You in big water now! Score! How tempting. Fresh apple pie still warm from mom's oven. Why, it's as American as mom's apple pie. Score! Good move, Freddy. Drop in one steaming hot pie to get another.
You received this letter a few years back from your recently dearly departed friend, Phil Graves. Dear Freddy, thank you so very kindly for your gracious hospitality during my recent convalescence. The floor of your workroom proved a comfortable bed, and the stale pharmacy goods you fed me staved off starvation quite adequately. I must admit to being a little curious of your request that I retain your safety deposit key for you. I cannot imagine what you have secured in that bank vault that could create such strong feelings of both revulsion and endearment. However, I have done as you asked and taken your key with me. I vow to you I will never return this key to you, nor even allow it within your sight. I further swear to keep it with me wherever I go. On this you have my word of honor, for I am ever your friend, Philip D. Graves. Reboot Hill was opened in 1849. Disease and violent death were so popular back then that the cemetery plots were auctioned off at the Coarse Gold Plot Exposition of 52. Ten years later, due to overcrowding, the bodies were exhumed and buried off the top of Half Dome in Yosemite. The plots were re-auctioned off. It's been that way ever since. Thank you for your kind attention to this plot synopsis. Aha! You'd always wondered where Jim E. Hoffer was buried. Oh boy! It's one of those rare Burma Shave headstones. The tall stone fence posts are pebbled and worn from years of rain, wind, and tourists. The epitaph reads, Looks like your dear friend Philip has passed on. Gee, it seems like only a day or two ago you filled a prescription for him. Uh-oh! Score! Glancing furtively around to see if Doug's within sight, you grab his shovel. You start to dig up the freshly laid grave. Muscles that haven't been used in years begin to groan and whine. But with the gritty determination of a professional grave robber, you toil on. And on. And on. It's an open grave. Even a world-weary, seen-it-all pharmacist like yourself, one who deals with cold sores, headaches, and diarrhea on a daily basis, still can't shake that uneasy feeling one gets when standing close to death. You carefully search through the many pockets of Graves' three-dollar suit until you discover the safe deposit box key you entrusted to fill oh so many years ago. Score! In a touching display of emotion, and a hidden desire to carry a little less around with you, you fold up Philip's letter and place it under his folded hands. I guess this makes Phil a correspondence corpse.
It's a pile of rich reddish dirt from the grave. In fact, it's more clay than dirt, which explains all the lush growth around here. Score! You grab a handful of clay from the pile beside the grave. Well, you never know, it could come in handy. You begin the arduous task of replacing the heaping mound of dirt one shovel full at a time, over and over and over. Say, it was too bad about your pharmacy being shut down. Must be hard to lose a business so sudden-like. We here at the Bank of Bob sympathize. A masterful portrait of P.H. Balance's father, Bacillus Ophiclid Balance, or Bob for short. It's got a little plaque. Apparently, it doesn't have time to brush between meals. Phineas H. Balance has cleverly situated a newfangled box camera up in the corner to photograph customers. Only trouble is, most customers don't stand in place for 15 minutes. It's a velvet mural that depicts the driving of the Golden Spike as performed by a Toreador and a couple of children with really big, sad eyes. It's Phineas's file cabinet. One of the local plants has been pulled up and potted. It's P.H. Balance's clock, eternally set to 357 so that he can hustle people out of the bank with a we're closing in five minutes. Couple of pretty cameo portraits of P.H. Balance's favorite pinup girl. That Kerry Nation is such a looker. The vault door is two solid feet of case hardened high carbon balsa wood, painted gray to look metallic and fool would be bank robbers. This is the key to your safe deposit box. Score. You hand the safe deposit box key to PH Balance. It'll be ready Tuesday. Oh, I mean, allow me to fetch your safe deposit box for you immediately. It's your safe deposit box. You haven't even looked in this box for, what, 10 years now? Ever since you moved to Coarse Gold. You'd forgotten. You used your old lucky neckerchief to wrap those pistols in. These are your two gunslinger pistols, left over from your salad days, you know, those days when you were still green? Score! You lovingly lift your pistols from the box where they've spent the past decade. Score! You take your lucky neckerchief out of the safe deposit box. Now you're really beginning to feel lucky. Wait a minute. The last time I wore this was when Kenny shot off my ear back in St. Louis. Well, okay, so maybe it's not that lucky a neckerchief. Oh, <sighs> I'm all done now.
Thank you for using the Bank of Bob. Ah, scrap. Thumbing through the bank register, you discover that little Charlie Keaton's kid has an account here. Hmm, I guess that's how little acorns grow into mighty oaks, one penny at a time. This turn-of-the-century sheriff's office is manned by a real turn-of-the-century sheriff. That's the jail cell, where Sheriff Checkham Chicken P. Shift tosses the bad guys. With the town's population dwindling, there haven't been many occupants lately. The sheriff hung his hat and long coat on the rack. Y'all just leave them duds alone, boy. You know I like you, boy, but you go poking round in a man's privates. I takes your hands off in nothing flat, boy, just like that. Sheriff, I'm going to be saying my goodbyes soon, and I just wanted to thank you for all your help. Don't mention it, boy. If I can do anything to make your departure more hasty or pleasant, feel free to ask. Say, Sheriff, I know how much a law enforcement person like yourself enjoys a good hot cup of coffee every now and then. Thanks, partner. But you know what? Something sweet would sure taste good right now. Why, I bet that's true. I'll be glad to try and find you something to munch on. But in the meantime, I've been thinking about moving to another city. But I've got no bullets. I was wondering if you have any bullets that would fit an old 45. Why sure, son, here. Have a box of these Remingtons. No charge. They're on the county. <laughs> Here you go, Sheriff Shift. I found some of Mom's nice hot apple pie for you. I know how much a law enforcing person like yourself enjoys sweet fatty breakfasts. Well, thank you. I've been so hungry, I could have ate a bar. This will sure go good with that cup of coffee you brung me earlier. Uh, Sheriff. Do you have anything I could use to clean these old guns of mine before I leave town? They're mighty dirty and I want to be prepared for my long journey. Okay, son, but this gun cleaning kit will be the last thing I give you. Now, get your guns cleaned, get your horse packed, and get your ass out of my town. Those are the Sheriff's six guns. Actually, they're revolvers and rifles, but there are six of them. It's an old register clock. That's an old trunk dated back to the 1870s. Actually, in that case, it's pretty new. This is where the Sheriff keeps his trade journals. Some of the Sheriff's law and order books, Pent Up House, Letters to Pent Up House, Pent Up House Pets, Pent Up House Forum, Female Convicts in Bondage, Babes in Bars, and Debbie Does Cell Block D. Main Street comes to an end here in the thick, mucky swamp. 
Beyond it lies the old abandoned mine. It's the last train to course gold, and it's sunken at the station. This big old water tower was previously used by the train station. Now it's junk. That's the old abandoned mine, once run by the old abandoned mine company, Inc. You remember blowing it up in the demo. It was Coarse Gold's original ore house. These old mining car tracks are rusted and beyond their useful lives. Chances are you'll need that. Don't be tossing it into the swamp. Over yonder's the old abandoned miner's commissary, where the miners used to eat before the mine closed down. Of course, the food over there is as fresh now as the day it was made. Sheriff Shift was so nice to give you his gun cleaning kit. He may be a low-down, evil, corrupt, two-time and no-good varmint, but he's got the cleanest pistol in town. Or so says Madame Overy. You poke around in the gun cleaning kit, but you find nothing useful. Hey, maybe a fella could use this for cleaning guns. Duh. With the sheriff's cleaning kit, you lovingly clean and polish your old pistols till they're like new. Good thing you removed all that nasty rust from your barrel. Damn thing could have exploded right in your face. Score! Tons of ammo, hot lead, hollow points, dum-dums. You slip the bullets in the chamber as the old memories come rushing back. did not a few featuring you and your first cousin out behind the barn when you were both curious eight-year-olds. Located on this rocky hillside is Madame Overy's place of business, a custom-built body house built in the fashion of the pastel gothics. Of course, they had to get the rocks off the property before they could build here. Srini's waiting for you to start your target practice. Well, Strini, I think I'm ready to try some target shooting. You ready? Uh, certainly. I am without a desire to wait any further to stand in front of your blazing guns and take my life in your hands to help you perfect your shooting. How do you want to start? Perhaps it would be besting if you place some targets upon the fence posts for a commencement. Okie the dokie, Freddy Farkas. First we shall see if you can successfully strike the bottles from afar with the bullets of your pistol. Then I will toss the bottles up in the air and you may try to hit them in flight. Good luck and may the best man win.
good Freddy Farkas. Let us try some quick drawing. Just make sure you hit the target and not me. Score! I'm uploading myself inside. Now for the big challenge, six bottles all at once. Say, Freddy Farkas, you are not so bad after all at this shooting gig. Why, thanks, Srini. My life and the lives of every man, woman and ruminant in this town depend on my being quick with a gun. Did you not mention earlier that your life is in danger most forthcoming? Something like that. Might I then suggest that you might be excellent to placing a disguise upon your person, thereby making it to appearances that Freddy Farkas has no longer around in this locality? Good thinking, Srini. I'll need a disguise of some sort, something that will strike terror into the hearts of the bad guys. I know, a bat. I'll disguise myself as a bat, and you can be Srini, the boy wonder. You have any leotards? Pardon me for asserting, but this bat thing is really hokey. Ah, you're right. Too juvenile. Let's see. How about... Might I suggest a skin-tight costume with flowing cape and placed upon the manly chest thereof a large F for Farkas? Nah, that'd never work. I don't want people to know I'm Freddy, remember? Then perhaps you are needing to do something about that right ear. Or, rather, the lack of that right ear. Dang it, you're right. Everyone knows me as the one-eared pharmacist. I need to make a new one somehow. Maybe forge one out of metal or something. I'll give it some thought and meet you back at the pharmacy once I've completed my disguise. Srini, what are you waiting for? You! The soonest you can arrange a disguisement of your right ear and complete an outfit most befitting of a gunslinging type person, the soonest we can get you dressed. The snot-nosed brat adds a lot to the charm of downtown coarse gold. What do you want? Can't you tell I got things to do? My, but the children in this town are polite. The door swings open. From the back you hear Chester's voice. Help yourself. I'll be right out. Hiya, Whittlin' Willie. How'd the gunslinging go? Great. I'm getting ready to leave town now. Drop the leaving town bit, Sonny. I know what you're up to. This is my story, remember? Oh, yeah. Now finish putting that disguise together and get to it, so we can get this town cleaned up once and for all. Hey, you don't have to tell me twice. Score! Willie, I'm in need of a way to disguise my ear. Do you think you could do something creative with this? Something in the shape of an ear, perhaps? Offhand, I'd say do it your dang self. My nap time's coming up shortly. I've had a hard day of whittling. But you could maybe do some lost wax casting with this sucker, and that'd do the trick. Lost what? Lost wax casting, son. What'd you do, sleep your way through metal shop? I guess I must have. What's lost wax casting? That's casting with an apostrophe, Sonny, not an ING. 
Anyhow, you can make all sorts of things by making a wax positive, using clay to make a mold, then melting down the metal and pouring it into a mold. To make a mold, you carve whatever you want to cast out of wax, see? That's what we call a positive. Now, once you got the wax positive, you take some clay, see, and you pack the clay all around the positive. You just leave a little hole at the top so you can get the wax out. So now you got your wax inside the clay. Well, you just heat that sucker up till the wax goes all oozy and you pour the wax out. That's the lost wax part, see? Now you got your empty clay mold, what we call a negative. You smelts down your metal and pours the metal into the negative. Once it hardens up, you can just scrape off the clay and there you are. Did you get all that? I think so. I'm not sure. Well, that's what your restore button's for, kiddo. Now, scrambooch! The door swings open. From the back, you hear Chester's voice. Help yourself. I'll be right out. It's Whitlin Willie's authentic Whitlin knife. Score! You borrow Whitlin Willie's knife for a while. These Confederate Army penknife replicas are becoming quite popular among the more sophisticated Whitlers. With your newly acquired Whitland skills, you carve the candle wax into the shape of an ear, one that should theoretically attach snugly to the remains of your original ear. But now look at the gunk on Willie's knife. I'll toss this knife over here where Willie might find it. He'll probably think he dropped it here. Yeah, sure. This handsomely carved wax ear looks very much like the one that bastard Kenny the Kid shot off so many years ago. You carefully pack the clay in and around the wax ear, leaving a small opening so that you can pour out the molten wax later. You return. Yep. It is good to look upon your eternally smiling countenance a face again. Yeah, yeah, I've missed you too. It's a silver medallion recently awarded to Srini by the American Society of Salves, Holistic Ointments, Liniments, and Emollients Salesmen. It was in honor of his impressive and yet oddly comforting display of old Gampy's fisherman throat gullet descaler lozenges. Score! You carefully remove the medallion from the wall. Srini will never miss this. Pretty Farkas, what in an entirely unsatisfactory afterlife are you doing with my finely earned silver medallion? It's going to a good cause, Srini. It's going to help make coarse gold a safer, saner place to live. I am hoping so, Freddy, for all the six. The wax in the mold slowly starts to melt. The melted wax runs out of the mold and spatters on the work table, resulting in an empty ear-shaped mold and a table with a severe case of waxy buildup.
the silver medallion slowly begins to melt. The medallion is nearly completely melted now. You now have a crucible containing molten silver. That just You quickly pour the molten silver into the empty mold. You quickly lick your fingers and pinch out the alcohol lamp's flame. Your ear mold ugh, is now filled with the melted silver from your award medallion. You know they're not going to send Srini another medallion. You scrape the clay off and discard it, leaving you with a gleaming silver ear. Beautifully done. With an ear like this, you could, dare I say it, rule the world! <laughs> Score! It's your soon-to-be world-famous silver ear, symbol of truth, justice, and the pharmacological way. Srini, I think I'm ready to get dressed. Very good then. You start to dress and I will assist you in shortest order. Score! With your boots, your clothes, your guns cleaned and loaded, your silver ear and your lucky neckerchief, you're ready to get dressed and assume your identity as the gunslinging stranger. You return to your penthouse suite high atop the glitter in Farkas Pharmacy in beautiful downtown Corsgold. There, Srini greets you and solemnly assists you in the final preening. It's a somber and yet somehow exciting event. There you are, Freddy Farkas. You are mostly indeed a picture of stately, mysterious strangeness. Nobody will be positive to recognize you now, at any time or place. Thanks for your help, Srini. Coarse Gold owes you a debt of gratitude it can never repay. If anyone asks, Freddy Farkas has left town. And if I don't come out of this alive, the pharmacy is yours. That is of a true generous nature you are displaying, Freddy Farkas. As for me, I would like to open a pharmacy on the reservation among my people. But whether that is fated to be or not is in the hands of someone who is not I. Luck be with you, Freddy Farkas. I am proud. <laughs> <laughs>